Greetings, everyone, and welcome to a special online event today. It's called Discover How the Somatic Pendiculation Technique Restores Optimal Movement and Reduces Chronic Pain and Tension. My name is Stephen Dynan. I'm the founder and president of the Shift Network, and I'm really delighted to be with you, getting to learn and move right alongside with you with one of today's leading faculty members in the field of somatics. Her name is Martha Peterson. She's the founder of Essential Somatics and author of Move Without Pain. And today we're really gonna have some breakthroughs in understanding how our body works and how you can actually work out tensions in a way that are you know, counterintuitive in certain ways. And they would learn some very new things about how our whole sensory motor system can be tuned in a way that allows us to have greater fluidity and freedom in our body. So with that said, Welcome to Martha. Thank you for joining us. I am absolutely thrilled to be here, Stephen. Thank you so much. Great. Well, we're going to have this hour together. We're also going to practice together during this time. And I also want to let everybody know that we're going to have a chance to go much deeper with Martha in a brand new seven-week program that we'll share a little bit more about towards the end of the hour. So Martha, let's start our journey with a little bit about your journey. So what was it that propelled you into really becoming a pioneer in the field of somatics? Well, I, I was very inspired by the work of Thomas Hanna quite accidentally. And I came to this work after, I'd say, a couple of decades of experience in a lot of movement practices. I was a professional dancer. I had to quit my career early on because of repetitive injuries. And I just never understood what was wrong. Why could I not get to the other side of my injuries? Because after all, I was, I was trained at the best schools in New York City. I was a professional. And, um, and yet, uh, injury after injury after injury, I, my technique just became sloppier, less strong. I just felt like I was becoming more and more disconnected from myself. And uh, and all I had ever wanted to be in my life was a dancer. I, I am meant to move. I have lived a life of movement. So I segued into nursing school. I wanted to become a midwife and uh, massage therapy. And I kept learning more and more and more and more and more about the body. And I had a lot of information about the body. And yet when I hit around the age of 40, I started to feel uh, chronic pain in areas that I had never had pain in before. And no matter what I did, and remember, I, you know, I came with a lot of information about the body. And I had a lot of techniques as a massage therapist. And I stretched, and I rolfed, and I chiropracted, and I uh, meditated, and I, uh, I did everything that I knew how to do. And somehow, I just didn't feel good for the long term. And then I kept having people come back to me in my massage therapy practice saying, um, you know, that was a great massage you did last week on my shoulder. Why don't you do it again? And I realized that no matter what I did, they never, they never came back having, you know, feeling better. So I felt like I was, I was there to fix people and yet they never learned anything about themselves. And it was, it was exhausting because I realized I couldn't help people uh, get better for the long term. And that's what I had uh, thought I was going to be able to do. So um, finally, my own physical challenges kicked in to the point where um, this was a time when I was teaching dance in a private school. I was also a dance educator. And um, I finally couldn't even go to school and teach my kids because I was limping with chronic pain. And my mother said, Martha, come on, I told you, get on the floor and do these somatic exercises with Thomas Hanna in his, uh, on his cassette back in the day. And so I lay down and I listened to Thomas Hanna guide me through some really easy movements of arching my back and releasing my back and rounding and, and bending to the side and twisting my, my shoulders and my hips in opposite directions. And, and it was slow and it was easy. And he talked about all these concepts and somatic philosophy. And, and it was stuff I had never, ever heard before. And I wondered, why have I never heard about this before? This is crazy. I stood up after about three hours of movement and I was about 80% better. I could walk my dog around the block. I could, I could walk without pain. 
I felt more connected to myself and it, it blew my mind and I never looked back. I decided to become a practitioner. I decided to dive into this concept of somatic awareness, the somatic perspective, and the field of hanasomatic education. So it was my own process of going from a, a vital, athletic, well-trained mover to a 47-year-old who could barely walk her dog around the block, when at the same time, my 77-year-old mother was trekking in the Himalayas, and that blew my mind. And I thought, well, if I can't be like her, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. And it was the work of Thomas Hanna that gave me information to turn everything around and become a more embodied, uh, aware mover in such a way that in many ways I feel better now than I did back then. Hmm. Well, it's a remarkable story you've been through, and I guess the moral of the story is do listen to your mother, <laughs> for one thing. But probably more importantly is that there's a, there's a different way, there's like a, a fundamental shift in how we orient to our bodies that I think you're pointing to and that can really lead to a real paradigm shift in how we're engaging. And remarkably, the you know 80% symptom alleviation in three hours is pretty remarkable. So maybe first start with like, what is that orientation shift, to like how we relate to our bodies? And then let's bridge into the, some of the work on pendiculation and sensory motor amnesia. Well, the biggest paradigm shift is that I was taught to, with the exception of as a dancer, as a dancer, you learn by feeling, sensory and motor. You 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 move and you and you sense again and you try something and you do it again and again and again and again and again until you become skilled. Now, what I had fallen into the older I got was this idea of myself as a body. I am a body that needs to be fixed. Oh, my knee hurts, let me go get a surgery for it. Now sometimes, and, and in my case, uh, legitimately, I wound up with about four knee surgeries over the course of a couple of decades due to accidents and injuries and overtraining um, issues from, from dancing. But uh, the paradigm shift was going from a perspective of myself as a body, I need to be fixed. My neck hurts, let me fix my neck. My knee hurts, let me fix my knee. My elbow hurts, let me stretch out and fix my elbow. To the understanding of myself as a soma. And a soma is a body as experienced from within. And when you close your eyes and turn your attention inward, all you experience is sensation and movement. So that paradigm shift from looking at myself as a body that can be fixed by fixing the, the myriad different parts as if I'm a broken bicycle or a broken toy to a system, a somatic system in which if there's tension in one part of the body, there's tension in the whole body. If there's tension in one part of the system that is you, whether it's mental, emotional, or physical, or spiritual, there is tension in the entire system. That was a huge shift to me. So how does that relate to the, the topic today where we're talking about pendiculation, somatic pendiculation technique, which is not something I've actually even heard as a term before. Pandiculation is such an easy, easy technique that uh, you can employ in order to instantly reduce tension in your central nervous system, reduce tension in your muscular system so that your brain always has access to those muscles and your muscles are reminded that they don't have to stay tight and tense all day long. So what is it that, about the lack of pendiculation that leads to pain? There's always a muscular response to life, whether we're aware of it or not. And we can get stuck in those responses to stress. Our history, uh, our conditioning, and our actions, our physical actions, and our physical habits can create patterns in which our brain teaches our muscles how to get stuck. So the muscles don't do anything that the brain doesn't instruct the muscles to do. Our muscles attach to our bones, our muscles move our bones, but our brain controls our muscles. So when people say, well, you know, 
I'm slumped. That's what happens when you get old. Well, no, it's not what happens when you get old. That's not inevitable because I've worked with 15-year-olds who sit like this. And I've also met 85-year-olds who sit like this. What's happening is that people are getting stuck in their habitual responses to stress. Now, what pandiculation can do is just like yawning, you contract into what your the, the stuckness of your muscles, and then you expand out. Let's say you're wearing a belt and you want to take your belt off. Instead of yanking on the belt, which is what trying to force yourself to change your posture is all about, you actually tighten your belt one notch, then open the belt, and that's like pandiculation. Go into what's already the tight muscles, slowly come out into a new length and function, continue to do that again and again, and that's what a yawn is, until you find yourself, whoa, I'm sitting up straight now, I'm no longer hunched with my face forward. So that's what pandiculation is. It's, it's a going into the tension of what's already there and moving out into a new sense of muscle length, muscle function, and sensory awareness. Fascinating. Really great insights. And so how does this connect with the concept of sensory motor amnesia? Sensory motor amnesia really is a habituation of a stress response. Whether it's that your back is habitually contracted and you have chronic back pain, which gets in the way of your walking, it gets in the way of your of your sleeping, it gets in the way of, of, of your ability to feel really good in your body. Sensory motor amnesia is often, um, it, it shows up as back pain, sciatica, um, uh, foot pain, knee pain, uh, head forward posture, uh, wrist pain, uh, joint pain, because it is actually a muscle, it's muscle dysfunction that is often seen as, as structural um, dysfunction. So um, that's a really important thing to understand is it's really about, um, it's about your function uh, needs to be improved. Uh, and and when, as, as your function improves, your posture, your ability to move, uh, all of that will improve. Really interesting explanation. So basically you're having to unhabituate something by making it conscious and even letting it exaggerate some, and then you can start to work with it in a different way. So let's talk about that pandiculation and then how do you begin to work with that in a really conscious way to sort of uh, repattern a new, new muscle memory pattern? Okay, so pandiculation has three very distinct parts. And, and for those of you watching this, you can think about this as in terms of your yawning, is that the, there are first uh, three stages of a pandiculation, and they're very specific. The first one is a contraction into what's already tight. For instance, your shoulders are tight. Contracting your shoulders a little bit, uh, a little bit more than they already than they're already tight. This brings very strong sensory feedback to your brain. The second stage is slowly, slowly releasing, right? This is where your brain is taking back the muscle length and the function, and also where you're getting a moment to, to sense the quality of your movement. The third stage is complete relaxation. So if you think of it as a yawn, first we contract into our center, we wake up in the morning, then we slowly, slowly lengthen out our limbs and it feels really good, right? And we don't rush it. And then we get to the end and then we completely release. And then we go, wow, that felt really, really good. That is a pandiculation. So when you pandiculate into and out of these very basic reflex patterns that we, we work with called the red light, the green light, and the trauma reflexes, pandiculating the back of your body, slowly releasing those muscles, then pandiculating the front of your body, slowly releasing those muscles, then pandiculating each side, 
first one side and then the other, what you're doing is you're pendiculating yourself in three dimensions so that you can restore a sense of balance and symmetry by reducing all this excess muscle tension that is holding you maybe out of balance or a slightly twisted or rotated. Um, and, and, and of course, subsequently getting in the way of the way that you move. Fascinating. Well, I think now would be a great time to, uh, for you to guide us in, in an actual practice um, that yeah. helps us embody this. Absolutely. So how about if, um, first let's explore a pandiculation. So everybody watching at home, let's go ahead and uh, just sit normally. Sit uh, wherever you're sitting. Just close your eyes and sit up to what you feel is straight. And then become aware of your shoulders and the tops of your shoulders, please. And let's just do one shoulder first. Just become aware of how it feels. You could even maybe take the other hand and, and um, tap that shoulder and feel whether or not it's really, really tight. And you can also subsequently feel the side of the same side of that, that side of the, your neck. Be very, very gentle with yourself, please. And then put your other hand down and become aware of your shoulder and your neck. And very slowly, go ahead and shrug that shoulder right up towards your ear. Go all the way up. And you might feel that the side of your neck is tightening as well. And if you really want to be aware of that, take your other hand and, and you can palpate very gently, touch that side of your neck. That's the first stage of pandiculation, tightening, tighter than what's there. Now slowly, slowly, slowly melt your shoulder down. Take your time, keep breathing as you need to, and notice if it's jumpy, jerky, or shaky. And at the very end, just let everything melt. And now notice what you feel. Let's do it again, and let's, in fact, let's add the, the head. Go ahead and shrug that shoulder up towards your ear, gently tilt your ear to your shoulder. Only enough so you can feel it. Please don't work too hard. You do not want to create any pain and very, very slowly release. All the way down. Let's do it one last time. And as you do it one last time, I'd like you to become aware of any jumps, jerks, or shakes on the way down. That would be sensory motor amnesia. That's where your brain um, it doesn't quite have control. So slow it down and smooth it out. Do it one last time. And as you, as you slide your shoulder up to your ear and very gently tip your ear to your shoulder, notice how that same side waist is lengthening. To slide the shoulder up to the ear is to release the waist on that side. And now very, very slowly melt your ear from your shoulder, your shoulder from your ear. Keep breathing as you need to. And when you get to the end, just switch everything off and notice with your eyes still closed, notice the difference between your sensation on the side you just pandiculated and the side you have yet to pandiculate. It might feel bigger, more awake and aware. So now let's do the other shoulder. Go ahead and slowly shrug that shoulder up towards your ear. Notice how your shoulder blade slides up over your back. Go ahead and tilt your ear to your shoulder. You might be noticing right now that that side of the waist lengthens to allow you to shrug your shoulder up and very slowly make it pleasant. Smooth it out, slow it down. Oh, I feel lots of jumps on the way down. Become aware, and by all means, there's no judgment involved in any of this. You're simply being curious and, and, and available to the learning. Let's do this two more times at your own pace, slowly shrugging the ear to the shoulder, the shoulder to the ear. First step of your pandiculation, feel the new sensation that you just created very slowly. Melt down, take your time. If you wanted to feel the release of your muscles, you could take the fingers of your other hand and just notice.
And last time, go within your own comfort range, ear to shoulder, shoulder to ear, just like a gentle yawn and very slowly coming on down. And notice both shoulders now. Notice what has shifted and changed. Is there any difference in your awareness of what you consider to be your shoulders? What about your neck? Is there more of an awareness of your neck being connected to the rest of your body? So let's actually do, let's do both of the shoulders together and let's add them uh, in, a, in a specific way to a couple of the reflex patterns. So go ahead and shrug your shoulders to your ear, ear to your shoulders, and go ahead and arch your back. If you want to take a look at me, I'm arching my back and rolling my pelvis forward. Notice the back contracts, the shoulders draw up, pelvis rolls forward, and very, very slowly release your back. Soften the muscles of your back. Melt the muscles of your shoulders and let everything go. Let's go the other way. On your next exhalation, sink the center, shorten the muscles of the front, round your back, roll the pelvis back, shrug your shoulders up, and notice how your face goes forward and very slowly, keep breathing as you need to, soften the muscles of the front, soften your belly, open your chest, let your shoulder blades slide, your shoulders release and relax, beautiful. And just take a second before we continue and notice the connection of your head to your tail, your shoulders, your neck, and the center of your body. Now let's bring your arms down to your sides and begin to play with a movement I, I like to call seated awareness. Often we're not aware of, of how we sit and since many of us sit all day long at the computer um, and we sit because we want to watch a movie or we're sitting in a car, um, sitting is not a bad thing, it's how we sit and whether or not we're aware of how we sit that makes the difference. So now that you've released the shoulders a little bit and you've, you've, you've connected your neck and your shoulders to the center of your body, but now become aware of how you're sitting. Notice the weightedness of your pelvis and notice those sit bones, those two little feet at the bottom of your pelvis. And very gently, we're going to play with the green light and the red light reflexes. Go ahead and as you inhale, arch your back, draw your shoulders back and roll your pelvis forward. Let your belly fall forward as if you're, 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 you're moving forward on the balls of those, those feet, your sit bones. And stay there. Feel the muscles of your back. You can use your hands to feel the tension you just created in your back. And then very, very slowly, release your back. Keep your belly soft, but release your back. You're pendiculating into and out of the go, 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 got to get things done reflex. Let's do this one more time. Inhale and arch and let your shoulders draw back. This is the, for Pete's sake, stand up straight reflex, right? Go, 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 ready for, ready for action. The back is contracted, shoulder blades are drawn back, pelvis rolls forward and the chin comes down and slowly release. Keep breathing as I talk. Go at your own pace. Can you release your back muscles? Let's do it one last time. Go ahead, inhale and arch. Let your chin come down. This is what you would be doing if you were standing up, looking forward, and very slowly soften your back. Keep breathing. Let your shoulder blades slide from your spine. Let your neck release and let everything go. And with your eyes closed, just notice where you're sitting. Has anything changed? Now let's go the other way into the slumping red light reflex, the startle response, worry, fear, and anxiety. So go ahead, as you exhale, can you sink your chest, tighten your belly, 
Roll your pelvis forward as if you're about to fall backwards in your chair. Let your shoulders roll forward and let your face look forward. Imagine you're looking at your computer screen. Stay there and notice how the back is round, your front is short and contracted. Now slowly come out of that, pandiculate, soften and lengthen from your pubic bone to your navel, to your breastbone, out to your collarbones and your shoulders. And let's do it again. As you sink, sink your belly, sink your rib cage, slump forward. You might even want to squeeze your knees together. And notice how your face goes forward, your pelvis tucks under, slowly release. This is what we do when we're worried, fearful, and slumped over a lot of technology all day long. So now let's play with going into and out of both reflexes with your eyes closed, but each time can you make the movement smaller? Go ahead, go into your green light reflex. The back arches, the front opens and lengthens, slowly, slowly release in your own time. Notice the quality of your movement and slowly sink, rounding inward, tightening your belly, and then slowly softening. Notice one side lengthens as the other side shortens. You are meant, your brain wants you to do this. And as you continue to do that, each time making the movement ever so slightly smaller, it's like you're a pendulum trying to find your way back to balance. Continue breathing as you need to, noticing how the head and the pelvis are connected via the spine. Until on this last repetition, only you know that you're moving. Make it small, make it tiny, until you are right back to balance. The sense of balance on top of your sit bones not in front of them, nor in back of them. Can you let your belly go? Can you let your bottom go? And now go ahead and open your eyes and notice, is it easier for you to sit now that you've released the tension in the front and the back of your body? Now imagine if you did that movement at least a couple times every hour at your desk, you might be able to sit without pain, without back pain, without neck pain, uh, and, and still breathe and, and oxygenate yourself and oxygenate your brain and, and feel more invigorated at work and, and more creative and, and more focused. So that's something that you can do uh, every day and I hope that this, uh, this short practice has given you a, a comprehensive experience of at least a couple of the reflexes, the red light and the green light, and a sense of connection between your neck, your shoulders, your spine, and your pelvis, that you are indeed a system and not a jumble of separately moving parts. Mm. Well, what a great and super helpful exercise. One thing I noticed with myself is as I was kind of hunching forward a little bit, I would notice where there's a tension pattern in my back. And then my first impulse is to start stretching it, right? So it's like the more, the exact opposite of what you're saying is, oh, there's a tension pattern, stretch it out. And so do you notice that people have a pattern of trying to stretch out like in a more kind of forceful way, the area that feels uncomfortable even while you're doing the pendiculation? Oh, absolutely. People absolutely begin to stretch past the point that really is neutral because what you're doing is you're tinkering with your habits. And, and at the level of our brain, our brain is very comfortable with those habituated patterns and is more likely to go back to those patterns if we don't give the brain new and novel stimulus and feedback. So uh, we also have a tendency in our society, and I know that this was what I was taught um, for my entire career as a dancer, is if something stretch, stretch, uh, tight is to stretch it out, is to pull it and yank it and work harder. When in fact, um, that is, it is, uh, well, it's, it can cause 
pain and it can cause harm and your brain doesn't learn anything new and neither do you. So you're, if you try to stretch and yank on a muscle that your brain cannot sense nor fully control what you're actually doing is you're making your muscles tighter and you're invoking, um, you're evoking, excuse me, uh, or excuse me, invoking um, the stretch reflex, which is a spinal cord reflex that that um, is meant to protect your muscles from from being damaged. But we're, we're so habituated to to pull away from the pain, as opposed to um, pandiculate and and stop when we have uh, done enough. Hmm. So do you see, do you still see a role for things like yoga or is it more like this actually helps to repattern the nervous system more quickly? Oh, there, there's a, a huge, um, huge, um, contribution that yoga makes to the world. And, uh, the beauty is that a lot of yoga teachers are actually studying somatic education and essential somatics in particular, and learning how to use pandiculation in order to prepare well, to pandiculate into and out of asanas and how to, um, how to encourage a sense of self-sensing and self-awareness and to prepare oneself to, to do the asanas with more awareness and to do their yoga better. So there's a huge contribution of yoga. And in fact, um, Thomas Hanna himself was a yoga teacher. So it is, it's one of the um, very first uh, somatic disciplines, um, there ever was. So, yeah, interesting. So in a way it's part of what it's doing is like you're, you're reconnecting your mind and body before the pose that, so, so you can actually get the value out of it as part of what I'm hearing. Yes, because really there is no distinction at all between the mind. There is no such thing as Hannah says there, uh, between uh, of a mind, a body mind. Mm -hmm. There, all there is is soma. It's a body, mind, spirit. It's a somatic awareness. So that it's not the mind and the body, which of course was cut off way back in, way back in the day when the, the, the doctors got the body and the church got the, no, excuse me, I can't remember which one it was. The church got one part of your body and, the, and, the, and medical science got the other, right? And there was this body, mind split. And when in fact it is, you are a soma in which, uh, what is physiological is equal, equally psychological and equally emotional. To do this, is this purely a physical action or is there a psychology involved? Is there, a, a psych uh, is there an emotion involved? There's always a thought and an emotion involved in an action. To do this is not just, I'm going to slump over my computer. There's also psychology and emotion involved in that. And, and that's not to, that's not a judgment. It's just, that's just what is. And, uh, so that's why we basically call it the somatic perspective. It is just somatic rather than hmm. mind and body. And so when you see yourself as a soma, whether it's in, in meditation, in yoga, in dancing, in, 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 in cooking, in whatever it, whatever it is you're doing, all life is a somatic experience. It is, you are the only one who's experiencing it. You are the expert in what it feels like to be you, whether you're in a yoga class or a somatics class or doing, you know, climbing up the mountains. Um, and ultimately, um, you're the only one who really knows, is it mental, emotional, physical, or spiritual? Hmm. Fascinating. Well, there's a lot of reprogramming that you're doing just in this call and thinking about even the ways our language creates a more dissociated kind of experience versus the more integrated som somatic experiencing that you're talking about. So it's really fascinating insights and practice. Well, uh, I think now would be a good time to talk more about um, your upcoming program for folks who really want to take this in, embody it, turn it into a practice, relieve maybe on the surface, like re relieve some pain or old patterns, but like really open to this more embodied somatic perspective in which you can, your body can age gracefully and open uh, to a lot more life possibilities. So we're really excited that Martha has agreed to teach a seven-week program for us. It's called 
gentle, effective somatic practices to move from pain to a life full of new possibilities. You can see it laid out in detail at somaticpracticerelief.com, somaticpracticerelief.com. It's going to be a seven-week program. There's no prerequisites for it. You don't have to have a background in somatic education of any kind. And this is really for somebody who's curious, wants to explore further. You might have pain as a symptom you want to address, but you're also just curious about having a different kind of internal experience of your body and life. And Martha, I'd love for you to share in your own words, what, what can people expect if they take this seven-week journey with you? How does their life begin to shift and open in new ways? I love to ask people, why do you care about moving? Why do you care about moving well? What is it that you want? You know, when did you last move well and feel really good in your body? And, and if you're not feeling that way, and you might not have any pain whatsoever, you might, you might just uh, feel like, well, I, you know, I, I feel pretty good, but I want to make sure that I can live to be 100 and still carry my own groceries up and down the stairs. So I really like to, to have people uh, begin the course by contemplating their intention for their lives and um, their ability to move. It's really about beginning to deconstruct their habits, their movement habits, and begin to entertain a very new perspective on themselves and on movement in general. So I, I like to uh, say that I'm, I'm going to take everybody back to preschool, and we're going to start in a very, very specific way by releasing the muscles of your body uh, that you might not even realize are tight. And, and doing that step by step by step. And as we uh, delve into the reflex patterns, and as we delve into to, um, uh, a pandiculation and movement, uh, people begin to, to feel a shift in their awareness of, oh, wow, this is, I didn't realize that I was stuck in this, or I was stuck in that, or I, I actually can't do this movement very easily, and, and I'm having more challenges with that movement that I, that, that I thought I would. And, and they start to really look at themselves in a very different way and, be, and begin to, uh, so uh, very often that which is unconscious begins to rise to the surface because what we're dealing with in somatic movement and especially when we pandiculate is we are dealing with that which is presently involuntary and unconscious that which you cannot sense and control is that which your brain is unaware of and when you start to slowly lovingly compassionately dive into that and start to make very gentle and slow shifts that which is unconscious begins to rise to the surface for many people. And that's actually the exciting part. So, um, and over time, uh, over the course of these seven weeks, people begin to restore their ability to stand in with more balance, to move in a way that they didn't before, to move their pelvis, to move their shoulders, to, to maybe extend or flex or side bend or uh, um, um, release tension in areas that they didn't realize they even had tension. So, uh, so um, and then by the end of the course, what I find is that people come away with as much learning about their life and the way in which they lived their life that brought them to that sense of disconnect with their bodies, how maybe that which they, they um, stuffed down inside, that which they just pushed on through in their life did, has not served them. And they begin to create a new way of being. And that is deeply, deeply personal. For some people, it's they walk away saying, wow, now I can walk my dog around the block. Other people walk away going, wow, I actually need to start taking care of myself because taking care of myself uh, has a lot of benefits and that's the change I'm going to make. Everybody walks away with a different kind of transformative experience about what is possible for them despite what they might have been told by their families, uh, greater society, maybe by what they told themselves for years, uh, 
maybe the, 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 the commonly held perspective that as we age, uh, we automatically fall apart. Uh, and, and they start to really play with um, and challenge their own perspectives on themselves. And that's a very exciting thing to do because then out of, uh, in, from a state of new awareness and new information and new embodied possibility, they can create truly whatever it is that they want. Hmm. What a beautiful uh, description of the value of taking this journey. So again, all the details are laid out uh, at the page somaticpracticerelief.com. And uh, Martha, I'd love for you to just give us a sneak preview of what you're going to be doing in each module. Module one is release the habituated posture of go, 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 addressing tight back muscle. I'm going to teach everybody how to release those tight back muscles that are constantly contracted every time a human being stands up and moves forward towards life, because we all do that, that's what we're designed to do as human beings, is that those back muscles contract to the point where most people by the age of about 40 have chronic back pain. Nowadays, in their 20s, people have chronic back pain, and that is sensory motor amnesia within those back muscles, that green light reflex. So they will, they will begin to release the muscles of the back in order to um, stand taller and move more easily. Module two, release the habituated posture of fear and anxiety, addressing tension in the front of your body. Well, uh, because the back and the front of your body work together, right? We are a system, and so the back and the front coordinate. And if you think about a baby, when a baby uh, comes out and it's, it's all rounded inward, it has no control over any of the reflexes or anything, and then you put that baby on the front, and the baby does tummy time, contracts the back, lifts the head, and and this is the, the moment that that baby starts to, to look towards the horizon and look towards becoming a, a human being and standing up on two legs. So the back and the front, if there's tension in the back, there is going to be tension in the front. So of course, we've got to, we've got to address both sides. So that now that you've released tension in the back of your body, now let's release tension in the front of your body so that you're neither slumped forward nor arched back and you can go into and out of those reflexes at will, but always know where home is, where balance is. Module three, release the habituated posture of trauma, restoring balance through your waist muscles. This is a great module that begins to really add a lot of missing pieces for people because we are an active society. And when we habituate to the trauma reflex, and this is the trauma reflex of, of physical trauma, right? A blow to the body or a, or a, a surgery, a one-sided activity or sport. Um, one side of our, of our torso can, can become tighter than the other. Uh, and that is because the, the, the waist muscles and, and the sides of the torso are what really help us to maintain balance because we have two sides, two arms, right? Two hands, two legs, um, is that when one side becomes tighter than the other side, immediately our balance um, uh, is, is, um, is um, negatively impacted and immediately our ability to walk easily, effortlessly and efficiently is negatively impacted. So, so in that, uh, that module, we, I will teach you how to begin to put the two sides of yourself together in such a way that you can restore more balance in your somatic center. Module four, free your rib cage for happier hips and shoulders. Aha. Well, in that module, we're going to explore quite a few things, one of which is to free the rib cage, which becomes locked down with any kind of sensory motor amnesia. And so our, when our rib cage is locked down, that means our breathing is locked down. And when our, when our rib cage is locked down, that means our shoulders and our pelvis cannot move with um, freedom and ease and coordination. So uh, I will teach people how to free their, the, the muscles between the ribs for a, a, a wonderfully pliable and movable rib cage, which will then in turn translate into more freedom of the shoulders and the pelvis. So. Module five, restore a balanced gait, walking with ease. By module five, people will have learned how to release the muscles of the front, the back, and the sides. 
and then to move their rib cage with more ease and coordinate the top and the bottom. And so just like a baby, I love to go back to developmental movement patterns of childhood, just like a baby learning how to stand up and move forward in life. The baby has to learn how to contract the back, right? And, and con uh, coordinate the back and the front. And then it, then it wiggles around on the side and then it rolls across the room. The shoulders and the pelvis and the legs and the arms are now coordinating. And then it crawls. And then, and only then when it has that coordination and sensation and awareness of their body as a full integrated whole, then that baby stands up and moves forward towards life as a human being. And that's what we will do in module five. Module six, relieve neck and shoulder pain with differentiation. So differentiation is, a, is an absolutely brilliant and mind-blowing concept technique, if you will. It's been around forever, but Moishe Feldenkrais brought it to the conversation. We will play with the muscles of the eyes and the, the, the movement of the eyes and the head as different from the, the neck and the shoulders and the torso. So we'll pull apart larger movements into smaller segments in such a way that will show you that when you learn how to segment and play with different aspects of the movement. When you come back to the full movement, everything is more efficient and more connected without forcing, without pushing, without pulling, and without, um, well, forcing. So differentiation is, uh, is useful in all aspects of one's life, not just with movement. And finally, module seven, integrate somatic movements into your life. In module seven, we will go through a comprehensive practice because really one of the things that I want everyone to leave with is the ability to create their own practice so that they can take these tools into their lives and use them for self-empowerment, to continue to become more embodied and to move on and, and have a great life. Uh, and one of the things that we also need to be able to do is to make these movements um, accessible. And so we'll do a, 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 a short seated practice in a chair because why not? Why uh, we don't live life on a floor. We live life uh, um, standing, moving, we sit, we do all sorts of things. So I want people to have actually no excuse not to pandiculate. So we'll do a standing, we'll do some seated, and we'll do some lying on the floor practice. Hmm. Well, what a great program. And I know that the practical benefits are going to be awesome for this. So again, all the program is laid out in detail at somaticpracticerelief.com. You get not only the seven 90 minute live sessions with Martha, you get interactive time, questions and answers, practices, recordings, both video and audio. You also get word for word transcripts, which is helpful to work with, study and highlight. As And you get some small group time to practice and connect with other participants and the Facebook community to really support you and deepen your journey. In addition, there's some great extra bonus that Martha has been very generous with there. You can see them laid out in detail on the page. There's a daily essential somatics movement practice. That's a 60 minute audio recording that's going to be particularly useful once you have gotten further into your journey and you want to just keep referring back to this. Martha, you want to uh, share a little bit about that 60 minute practice? That is a, a very, very useful audio practice. A lot of people will, they'll be very excited and they'll go, oh, I just, I just, I just need to have you talk me through my practice until it, it, it's really set in my body and I can really understand it. So that's the beauty of this audio practice is that you'll have me talking you through a practice, um, but I don't just do a long practice. I, I'll give you a short practice. I, I talk you through a seated practice. So there are a lot of different options for your practice, just to, to um, have options for what suits you in your life and in your schedule. Beautiful. There's also a video teaching from Martha called Pain Free at Work. Really important given the amount of time most of us spend at uh, computers. There's a short video practice from Martha on hip lift and reach, as well as a PDF article from her second book. It's called It All Starts with the Breath. In addition, there are some special bonuses that you get when you sign up by midnight tonight. 
We do this as a way to encourage you to make a decision now while you're in the field of what's, what we're sharing here today and you have the most information about making a decision about moving forward. And if you do choose to move forward today, you get four extra video sessions from our 2021 summit. This includes some really remarkable pioneers like Eleanor Criswell Hanna, Orit Sengupta, Simon Borg Olivier, and David Hall. So this is a special bonus to, as an auxiliary to your learnings with Martha when you sign up by midnight tonight. That's from our Somatic Movement Summit 2021. So we've kept the investment in this program really very accessible. It's just three payments of $109. You save 10% when you pay in full with one payment of $297. Course is gonna start January 24th and run Mondays at 11 Pacific, two Eastern. But even if you can't make that live time, you can still get the full value with the recordings and participate in the community and, uh, and the transcripts as well. So I encourage you to read through the testimonials on the page at somaticpracticerelief.com. There's a lot of remarkable stories of people who, whose back pain has evaporated and makes life more enjoyable. There's a lot of things around just getting out of pain, which can be so debilitating, and it can be really difficult to dissolve some of these patterns that our bodies can get into. And I think this is really one of the most sophisticated ways to address that. So some of Kim uh, from Canada says, I am totally blown out of the water with this work. And it's a great testimonial. And the power of what Martha's teaching. So Martha, this beautiful program starts in January. So I hope a lot of folks out there are going to join you for this. Anything else you want to share with them who are considering doing so? Well, I, I am always deeply, deeply grateful for people who come to any of my courses because I know that what they're, what they're going to get out of this is a deeper commitment to themselves. And that really humbles me because this is a practice that never should take the place of what you love to do. It helps you do everything you want to do in your life better. So just the fact that I can impart this learning to people, give them solid tools to move onward into their life, to do what it is that, that maybe they didn't think they could do. They never dreamed that they can do. Um, that, that just thrills me. And I'm so excited to be able to share this with as many people as possible. So I, I look forward to seeing people in January. Great. Well, it's really clear your passion for this area is, is so, um, yeah, it's, it's really attractive. And thank you so much for also your journey, which went from, you know, being this sort of a, a debilitated dancer to a teacher of liberated movement and, and uh, live, really being able to live gracefully until a, a ripe old age. So thank you so much for this work and for the wisdom that uh, comes with it. So again, you can find all the details on Martha's program at Somatic practicerelief.com, somaticpracticerelief.com. And the program is called Gentle Effective Somatic Practices to Move from Pain to a Life Full of New Possibilities. And you get those four extra bonuses from our 2021 Somatic Movement Summit when you sign up today. So thank you, Martha. Thank you all for joining us. Many blessings. Thank you.